the Bane certainly going to allow you to get that little bit of extra lockdown, of course. <sighs> there is maybe still the possibility for four zoomers to go for something like a silencer in response, but then either you're shifting the weaver over to the four, or you play the silencer in a position four role, which I'm not really sure if either one of those are fantastic for their lineup, but that is something that they could still maybe keep in their back pocket if they really do just want to shut down that Bane and not provide him too many opportunities, but I don't know. Four zoomers with the silencer, it's not really a hero that they have emphasized as significantly as their opponents or as most of the teams in this event, and now well, we are going to have to wait for that support pick. It's going to be the Legion Commander coming out from them, and well, considering Gunner's already got the Storm Spirit, there is really no play for the mid-LC here. That should very much go into Moo's hands. Yeah, I like it a lot. Of course, we talk about Tide, we talk about Mars, and we talk about Legion Commander. It feels like one of them is always going to bleed through, but really like it in this situation. Of course, you're picking it up versus the Bane. You have that Purge, you have that defensive capability. Are you going to pick up burst damage in his hero, though? No? Okay. So it is going to be a Weaver 4 here, most likely. But the Tree and Protector is very interesting. That's a classic counter pickup versus the Centaur Warrunner. Of course, you can't run. As soon as Husky gets that overgrowth, you suddenly have this massive spell that will stop any aggression coming in from the infamous side. And they almost need someone to now get the vision to find those kills. And that is a hero that provides just a little bit of vision. Okay. I like what Infamous are doing here. I We don't know if it's going to be Lumiere's hero or Samum's. Both of them play it extensively. But at the same time, that is your entrance onto the Roche Pit. It's something that four zoomers weren't able to pick up really in their lineup at all. Maybe aside from the Weaver Bugs. But Infamous do have that very quick and concise lineup. It's not Lesh, but this will get you onto a lot of those early buildings. And especially onto that first Aegis, which we know is so important for this TA. Always something that you sort of hope to pick up for that buff up just so that you can keep that momentum going. Otherwise, uh, we see TAs in the past. If you're not able to sort of pick that up or you're not farming well, then you really do hit a wall right at that sort of exact timing where you want the TA to continue pushing forward. So we'll see if Infamous prioritize that Roche uh, as heavily was, as we're sort of predicting here. In the meantime, though, we do get into the final phase of the bands and four zoomers are not ruling out the potential for that Lumiere TA instead as they do take the Leshrac away. So, obviously, as you were just saying, both Lumiere and Alone, or Samum now, do play that hero quite a bit, and if you allow the TA and the Leshrac, then your buildings are going to be in unbelievable amounts of danger. Yeah, and it, it's the idea of just Lesh makes so many lineups perfect. As soon as you have a hero that's so consistently good at killing Roche and you just pair it with Lesh, you, you have a perfect lineup. Not to mention, you would have the trifecta. You've got the Centaur in front, you've got the Lesh rack behind him, and then you've got the TA to output even more damage. And it's that same idea where you just can't let it happen to you. They do split their bands here, and I think that's pretty smart. They just know that there still is that flexibility and something that Infamous are going to keep us guessing until their final pick. Well, Costa Bile does not have that luxury. Getting his Luna banned out, that's almost expected. Do we see them ban out his Sven or his Terra Blade? Those could definitely be a possibility, but what do you play now that's going to pair with this Tree and Protector that actually lets you get aggressive onto this Lion? I was going to mention the Chug that, again, we see so many teams actually pick up whenever they do have a lot of healers, and poor Zoomers do have a remarkable number of natural heals in their lineup, but... They don't have that secondary reason to pick the Jug, which is they get aggressive around that 10-minute mark. They have that hero that comes from the offlane, and then they just suddenly get that mid-tier one. So they don't really have that secondary reason to pick the Jug, so they might not go for it. Might see Costa Bilo just end up on one of those farmers that's going to be kind of on the other side of the map, doing whatever he wants. Could go for Sven, but still, I just don't think that they would go for a hero like that, especially banning out the PL themselves. It, it feels like they're steering this in a completely different direction. Yeah, the Sven would certainly allow them to maybe fight a little bit more often, but we do still have something like the Terror Blade that they could pick up if Costa Blade just wants to sort of be in that stronger position. Yeah, that stronger position as a farming hero. The damage will come mm. later, and you're just going to have to hope that the LC and the Storm can sort of uh, pick up the slack until then, which, I mean, looking at these lineups, I think they do certainly have that potential. They just need to sort of wait things out, and a Costa Blade TB, I mean, that is straight up one of his... Uh, best heroes in terms of his efficiency, the damage coming out with the item build from him later. It's just something he's very, very comfortable with. Yeah, it's something you got to be afraid of. Not to mention how good it pairs up versus that TA. It is one of the nightmare matchups where, again, we always talk about Terrorblade and we talk about him getting his items and Costa Bilian needs the space to get those items, but you get Manta BKB Scotty, suddenly whoever ends up on this TA 
wishes he wasn't a TA. He doesn't want to exist in that same space. Oh. And okay, they're going to try and out-tempo their opponents. And I mean, they've got Bat Centaur. That is another age-old combo. You just immediately lasso, you stampede, you drag him back 50 feet, and then suddenly your save is not looking too hot on the four Zoomer side. At the same time, though, you picked Bat in the LC. Yeah. So you are always going to be Whoa. very conscious of your positioning. But yeah, the swap-up moves on that tree. Okay. Well, I mean, you can only imagine who's going to get his... Uh, almost calling card here on the meteor hammer for that hero but at the same time now you are always going to have that overgrowth you're going to have an incredibly farmed tree and protector in his lane is it going to pair well versus the ta we'll have to see i think Moo might struggle a little bit in that regard but in terms of the game i think four zoomers are incredibly happy with their lineup and at the same time infamous they are double downing here. They are saying we're going to run at your teammates. We're going to get the first Roche. We're going to take your map. We're going to get the second Roche. And then we're going to look for the end game. And then we're probably going to either beat you or lose on the spot right there. Because four Zoomers, once they get towards that 35 minute stage, they just win pretty much on all fronts. Yeah, I just. I'm looking at it. And the more I look at it, I think the more I like it. The switch. Because Husky on the LC. You mentioned earlier on there's a place mom goes in you get the lasso you get the stampede he bails up before you can save but now with husky on the lc instead of running it as a core husky has no other significant concern outside of being in position to save his teammate if they do make that jump in so you now take any significant farming pressure away from that legion commander you can focus all in on that save and defensive strength and hopefully that is going to be enough to matter it really will come down to what Moo can do with the treant in a core role but it seems like the right play for them to make from a defensive standpoint. And really, another part of it, and something that four Zoomers do so well, is you take the risk out of the LC. You suddenly don't really care about winning a lot of these duels, something that would have had to come from Gunner. You would have needed to draft a few more duel winners naturally in your squad if you did want to run this as a core. So they immediately take what could be a risky game for them to play, where Gunner and Mu have to have good games for them to succeed, to now... Gunner doesn't need to play with the Trian Protector nearly as much, and Moo is going to have a much more stable time actually getting off the ground. And I think that's, again, what we talk about with four Zoomers on, something that really I've taken note of is they are the more stable team now. They definitely don't wait for those opportunities where they wait for their opponents to make the right decisions first. It's usually four Zoomers, although it's usually a more defensive play, they just always have a much more stable game plan going into a lot of these drafts. In the meantime little bit of skirmishing there at the start nothing too significant though as he gets hit up a couple of times by lumiere but weaver falls back he can heal up but neither side really willing to back away entirely here so you know, we may end up with a bit of a fight around these rune spawns that's something that's really been done away with by a lot of teams uh recently in this event so would like to see if there's some sort of action meanwhile look at lumiere wrapping around he is going to try to get out some damage again could have just maybe stayed and tried to sneak the rune but he saw a bit of an opportunity but now he may get punished for this he is going to take some damage in exchange doesn't actually get the bounty that he was trying to sneak over for and well still not going to be any sort of early fighting we really just can't bait the teams uh, into going for it 2-2 split on the bounty runes and we will get the laning stage underway yeah and of course na fashion don't give away your base regen. Never going to go for those plays. It never ends up going well for you either. Seafreak has had to use a lot of his Shikuchis, but of course, it's a very efficient spell. And we'll have to see, because as I have to highlight every single time this Weaver is in the game, it is a battle for the Sentry. They're already scouting out for it. They know the position they're in, but Lumiere is going to eat a lot of damage here. They're just going to run him down. Yeah, they are getting cool. in onto him quite nicely. Big Nightmare out from A, though. So Moo's not going to be able to push over immediately, and... That does allow Lumiere to sort of fall back, but this is going to be relatively consistent from this offlane duo. Z Freak and Moo, they can just push so far forward. You see, look, Moo even just walking through the trees. So they've got that little bit of extra maneuverability between the tree walk, between the Shikuchi. So if you're Lumiere and A here, you always have to sort of keep your head on a swivel, uh, swivel excuse me, because there's just so many different angles that four Zoomers could hit you from. Yeah, you're always going to need to be concerned, but another big benefit is you're actually the one forcing into the TA's lane here with that spam coming in from the Nature's Grasp, and of course, that creates space for you to get the pulls off, and okay, Moo does need to be a little bit careful here, but at the same time, he's just walking and getting walked away from the creep camps, and it's something that he will inevitably be able to farm here, but 
they're just always bringing the fight over towards that TA, and there's not really much he can do. He's going to scope something in a sec here, but he doesn't want to be forced to get that level 1 refraction, because it is just not a very neat spell. Z Freak continues to just sort of press in over and over again, so... As much as you don't want it, I'm not 100% sure he's going to have too much of a choice if he continues to get pressured up here. There's not a lot of regen on that TA. A is at least able to pass over the salve, so that will alleviate those concerns for now. Maybe push off that decision for a little bit later, but this duo, Z Freaking Moo, they're just going to keep on playing forward as often as they can. Yep. Not much they can do. At least they have sentry control on Infamous' side, and I think that's where Z Freak is being very cautious until he finds his moment. And is that in range? Oh, it is. Mm. That's so sick. All well, right. perfect. So Z Freak, not going to have to worry nearly as much here in terms of that detection being thrown down, so he can continue to be obnoxious against this duo. Meanwhile, well, take a look at the other side of the map. See how this TB Legion Commander lane sort of gets on? Not really a duo that we get to see laning together all too often, but, well... I just, I'm not really sure they're going to be able to do much of anything. This is already a tanky here on the opposing side in the form of Sacred, and Husky really brings no sort of poke to the table. I mean, the overwhelming odds can come out occasionally, but it's a very mana-intensive spell for a lot of the times inconsistent damage. But Husky's just here to sort of act as the safety valve. If Costable gets into any trouble, he can bail him out. Yeah, and that really is all this Legion Commander needs to be. If you end up getting hit up, you just get purged, just like that. Doesn't end up ever eating too much damage, and days are long past of when Retaliate gave you stacks, and then you would suddenly be able to uh, kill a Terra Blade because you did 200 damage, but it just means that Costabile has that free time, has that easy access, just gets to do whatever he wants for a little bit here, and whenever that meta is up, he gets to deny a good two or three creeps. Unfortunately, he is splitting the XP in the lane pretty much 50-50 because there isn't really too many opportunities for Husky to just straight up leave him alone. That's where Costa Bili could very realistically die and actually, ooh, what a turn. Perfect. Double stun into the double edge. It's only level one, but you don't need much more damage after that setup. So Husky gets taken down and Infamous are able to strike first there. Very nice kill and Costa is actually... Okay, never mind. I thought maybe Sacred pushes back in, but without the hoof stomp, eh. They weren't going to be able to push any further than that, but it's a, it's a very nice maneuver. Husky, if he's sitting there saving the press of the attack to try and keep Costabile in a stable position, then doesn't have it to heal himself up, and he is uh, not even close to a durable hero on this LC. He's got 800 HP, but in the face of this much lockdown from Sacred and Michael, that really doesn't do quite enough for him. No, and it, it is really obnoxious for them to actually deal with these heroes, especially if Michael can just stay at arm's length. I mean, he, he's the only ranged hero in the lane, you know? Until there's a rotation coming in from anyone else, he could just kind of do whatever he wants here. But Sacred having that uh, vanguard, Hold up. just good damage. It's so good. And that's just such an easy sort of play for them to hit as well. As long as Michael connects with the Earth Spike, Sacred, he's going to get the hoof stop. He just has to walk up and and pop it, so feels like they're going to be able to put this pressure in onto Costable pretty consistently. Again, this is why Husky is really just sort of going for the press the attack build. They recognize this threat, and they're going to be able to survive it more often than not, but you take a look at the farm for the TB, as he does now pop the meta. He is lowest among the core heroes. Not by much, but it's really never a situation you want the TB to be in at any point in the game. Yeah, and it's the strength of the, the dinosaur that is Centaur War Runner. You just are able to double edge for creeps. You're able to not really be right-clicked out of lane, especially once he gets the Vanguard. And you just do so much base damage. Of course, it's supposed to be like is uh, eclipsing him right now, but whenever that meta is gone, I think Sacred's got at least 10 on him. So going for these last hits is already just kind of difficult. And I mean, look at him. Sacred actually has more HP despite how the HP bar looks. It, it's crazy. He has a Vanguard. Uh, he had that at, what, like five, five and a half minutes? So, there's not really a whole lot that can be done by Costable anymore. So, he very much just has to focus on his last hitting counts, but as we just saw, if Sacred does want to push a little bit further forward and really contest him, he has the ability to do so. So, this lane is not going fantastically for the TB, and you see his support actually rotating into that east side jungle. They try to get Gunner over to the side camp, and they do actually take that stack away. So that play, at least, very nicely put together for them, especially against the Bad Rider. If you can just take those stacks out so that Firefly play doesn't really factor in, 
You are sitting in a good spot, but now Gunner has to be very careful. He just ball lightnings his way through the flame break, and he will be able to avoid the lasso. Yep, really nice dodges, gets the reset on the napalm, gets even more mana, and it's the one downside of playing this bat rider is of course if you aren't finding those early kills he's just gonna farm he's gonna have that extra man to play with he's gonna have those stick charges and of course going for denies it's not something your hero has done it's something that bat rider has never done it's arguably the most frustrating part about playing it but seven stacks and that's seven more charges in the wand hmm. in the meantime i'm sorry was dropping frames for a sec there but we're, we're all good it's stabilized and and now gunner he can just fall back into the jungle, looking to build himself up further. And I mean, what is what is actually going on here? Michael and Sacred, they're both pushing out of the lane. They saw Gunner with the Obs Ward, but by the time they get over here, there really isn't much of a play to be made. Husky's tracking them the whole time, so there's no real element of surprise yeah. to work with. But now Husky, whoops, he was just trying to act as the scout, did not anticipate that they would simply turn around onto him, and well... Yeah, Husky's just sort of trailing behind him, thinking that nobody's going to spot him, but the same ward that spotted Gunner sees Husky coming up from behind, so Infamous simply turn around for a quick and easy kill. Yeah, and they got to be careful about those. Of course, it looked really awkward for a good second there, but then everything kind of resets to normal, and, well, I saw top, A dropped real low, and that's the Meteor Hammer. Moo's going to be running at your buildings all game. If he knew how low A was, he'd probably just go in for the dive immediately, but... We'll have to see. Can only imagine he's going to sync up that Meteor Hammer with the Creep Wave on the tower. And then, uh, well, your, your Creep Wave's gone. And so your Tier 1 will get pressured up pretty heavily here. I just... I always got to wonder with Mu. He picks up this Meteor Hammer sort of so often in these scenarios. Is he just sort of, at this point, just giggling to himself? He just gets to sit in the trees, pop your head out, get the Meteor Hammer down, fade away again, and... There's really just nothing Infamous can do. And now with Gustavo coming in as well... But this tower is going to be taken down, so Moo doing Moo things. But the fact that he gets the openings to make these same plays over and over and over again, it's just, uh, it's incredible. And it's much easier said than done, obviously, to just say, don't let Moo do that. But see him TP down bot. He's now looking to defend the tower. He didn't quite hit Sacred there with a the stun, but he's still going to try and break this up. Gunner's TP'd in as well, so I don't really know if they want this fight. They do pop the ult for it. Summon... Oh. Someone's coming in. He does have the lasso. He wanted Gunner, but he'll have to settle for Moo. As they will pull that tree and protector back. Should have enough damage to finish him off. And now if you're Gunner, you don't have a whole lot of mana here to look for any sort of return play. Z-Freak's coming over, but still not sure that's going to be enough. But they will still look for it. Michael was low on health and in the tree line. So Gunner at least has the mana to finish that off. It turns into a trade, but at the end of the day, Moo does what he wanted. He sets up for the push onto the top tier one and successfully defends the bottom. And that's where items like the Meteor Hammer are really obnoxious to, to deal with and actually sacred. Do you know that uh, coming? Vortex pulls him back in. They throw down the Swarm for the armor reduction. Sacred does not have the Stampede. The Gunner really does want this kill. Does he have enough mana now to get away, though? He's taking tower shots. Living armor coming in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael's level 7. <laughs> oh, boy. Um... Not not exactly a clean getaway, and that's that's maybe putting it politely. That's a big TP from Michael, though, recognizing uh, Gunner just went in with all of his mana, so able to find himself a couple of kills there to clean that up, and if you're infamous, well, you're more than happy with that one. Sure, you had to lose Sacred, but you're at least able to take the trade. Yeah, I, I think they really didn't check Sacred. He had raindrops, he had stick charges. Of course, he's deceptively weak whenever he's at low HP just because it, the game really doesn't tell you that this is a very, very tanky man still. At the same time, though, they were still ahead of the exchange, which is what this meter hammer allows you to do, unfortunately. And Mu is back bottom here. The tower did already eat quite a lot of damage, so defending it, it's not the same five tree and protector that usually we see with the Korean Gardic, where he's able to keep this tower alive for hours and hours on end. But Mu, at the very least, stops Sacred from going top, stops this centaur from getting in front of his own play, and he's going to be able to farm up here, or down here rather, for quite a while. And unless they have some of those Tinker Wards placed, there really isn't an easy play to be made onto him. He's even buying his own sentry just to. Uh, stop the idea that that could happen to him because he knows that really is the only way way he dies here but everyone else is smoked up gunner is looking on the offensive they want to try and hit somebody up husky's hit level six so he does have the duel at his disposal if they can find a target 
And it's always a bit of an interesting one, because Gunner has to be the one sort of initiating the fight, then the LC has to come in for the duel, because it's Husky on the LC. You have no real movement items at this point, but at this stage, they are much more interested in potentially mounting a defense of the Tier 1 mid. Infamous have grouped up quite heavily looking for this tower, but you do see Moo coming in. They're going to look to help this one out. Gunner's making his way over as well, and Sacred is going to be the target. They jump in onto him. Husky doesn't get the duel off just yet. Michael comes in with a very nice Earth Spike. They're going to try and turn this around. Husky's actually dropping low, but now he'll go for the duel. Not a duel that he wins, though. Husky gets taken down. Sacred is somehow still alive. Gunner gets picked off as well, and this fight is just going to go pretty disastrously, all things considered. I mean, well... I say disastrously, but technically speaking, it's two for two, and the tier one tower is still alive. That's kind of what the overarching goal here was for the side of four zoomers, but I just feel like they sort of gave up too much on that defense. Gold-wise, they come out ahead, but you give damage over to the centaur with that dual loss, and Gunner getting taken down is just a big blow to them. Yeah, and it, it's a little bit unfortunate. I think Husky, the really good player that he is, saying, I need to duel him. He needs to get hit by this meteor hammer. Otherwise, he walks out, and I kind of agree with him there. Oh, what an earth Big play from Michael. Michael. Yeah. Smum's coming in. He doesn't have the lasso, so this is a little bit of an awkward fight. And yeah, the Batrider just has to back away. Z Freak, for a moment, was thinking about the wraparound, but he sees Lumiere coming in through the river. Doesn't want to go that far forward, but Lumiere is here, so Infamous may look for something. They've got Husky slowed up. He was able to get the D ward off, though. So even if he dies here, he's at least able to make that play happen. And they Whoa. do manage to bring him down. Lumiere gets the kill. Do they look for any more, though? They're getting dangerously close to that Tier 1 territory. Man, just is so much damage. But, oh, what a glyph on the wave. Gunner's got a choice to make here now. He's trying to kill it off first. Okay. Knowing that he can't die to the Bat Rider and Michael is just not in cast range, so... It's a smart play from him, but this is another benefit of the Centaur. Look at your tower. Even though it's getting healed up, so just have him in front. Nice play from Infamous. They group up heavily for that Tier 1, but they're able to get it. And now, well, the entirety of this south side jungle is just sort of laid open to them. They had already put down several Sentry Wards in the area, but now they're free to farm it up as well. You see Sacred already trying to take advantage of that, and... This Centaur, he is keeping himself pretty high up there net worth-wise. The Blink Dagger is pretty much done, so... Sacred is really going to be very much involved in a lot of these plays. Well, once he's done farming, you see him continuing to work here. Blink Dagger finished off, but he's got the Crimson Guard queued up as well, so... Uh, against the Storm, Crimson's a little iffy, but you're going up against the TB. So the Crimson is going to reduce that damage coming out from the Terror Blade, his Illusions, really everything uh, other than the Storm. So that durability for Infamous is something that they're definitely looking into and maybe learning a bit of a lesson after the last game where that defensive itemization really just wasn't there for their cores. Yeah, and Z Freak, nice job cutting the wave there. And the Crimson Guard, it, it's an interesting pickup, of course. He also getting it because of the Weaver, getting rid of the Swarm. It's very obnoxious uh, aspect of the hero to, uh, to mess with. But at the same time, if they cut in here, and I think they might even go deeper... Yeah, Costa Bile. This Boy. is so smart. It's on the camps respawning. They know he's going to be in his triangle. Jump this in, so hit him up. He does have the Sunder, so they've got to go quick. <laughs> got to go quick, and Michael, well, doesn't get much faster than a finger of death to the face. So Costa gets taken down, a second stack up for the Lion, and they might be looking for a little bit more here. They've got some sort of idea that Gunner's in the area, but... That's a hard kill to get, yeah. Simone would basically just have to take him by surprise. There's no Blink Dagger or anything on that bat, so... Gunner is able to fall back, but Infamous... ...really are starting to get themselves going. Their cores continue to farm. You see all three of them sitting in the top four, and... ...they're TPing mid to try and make sure Zifri can't finish off this split push play. A Sacred blinks in, he gets the stomp down. That sentry is a little out of range, but he actually wanders back into range of A. I'll hit him up with a Fiend's Grip, and... ...they're gonna be able to finish that one off. So Zifri... I mean, it's Ooh, a nice Lumiere. maneuver. Uh oh, they spotted out the TA. Lumiere's going to get hit up. There's going to be the overgrowth. Husky comes in looking for the duel. Meteor Hammer gets down. Husky will win it against Lumiere. So bonus damage into the LC's hands. But more importantly, a kill for Gunner. For this Storm Spirit trying to get himself back into that upper echelon of the net worth. Trying to pick up uh, the Kai and Sanj actually being worked on here first. So the Storm maybe recognizing there's a little bit more of a threat damage wise. He wants to be that little bit tankier. And. Uh, Sanj will certainly help. In the meantime, they are pushing their way onto the Tier 1 tower. Kostable has the meta activated, and... Well, 
who makes the move here? Samam is just sort of trying to get the angle, but again, he's got no BKB and no blink, so he can't just march in there and look for the lasso. But at a certain point, four zoomers back away, recognizing they're probably not going to be able to get the tower without a fight, and it's a fight that they don't really want. No, they want to be patient. They don't want to give anything else over to Infamous, of course. They don't have their abilities. They know that there is no Fiend's Grip. They know that there is no Lion Finger. But getting the five men out of Infamous is just as good, honestly. Because now they're just going to retreat to their side, farm it up. Z Freak might be. Oh, nice time lapse. But still, nicer hook on. Right on Not top even of him. Hold up, yeah. There we go. Shiguchi wears so good. <laughs> Oh, they hit two stuns with no detection there. There was a sentry further to the north, but it wasn't in range, so... Well, they just do a good job. They guess correctly. They get the stuns down. The Shikuchi again wears off. They find the kill, and now... Sacred's gonna TP himself up top, where Mu oh. is not really safe. Yep, there's the blink. They get the stomp. A has no Fiend's Grip, but the Nightmare's gonna be there. Hmm. Can Mu somehow enough, get away? He's just gonna walk through the tree line, and... Yeah, they needed okay. that, but unfortunately he just got finished farming an ancient stack, so wasn't really in that same position, but now you got BKB on bat, you are ready to go. He does need to be careful, of course, whenever we talk about this train protector hero, the timing of that BKB matters just as much as having it. And Gunner, nice little invis rune for him to play with, but this is still Infamous's moment. If they take any successful fight on that top side of the map, then it is immediately into the pit, and they're going to get it very, very quickly. We'll see if A actually scouts out the Observer here, or do they just smoke under it? Okay, they're veering away from the OBS, but let's see if they make the call. I think four Zoomers are going to play scared for a little bit. The move is coming. The scan came in, though, so they know someone's up here. But it's Gunner. That's not an easy hero for them to hit up. Yeah, he's able oh. to zip himself away. Good attempt from Michael, though, with the Blink Dagger. It's just not quite in time. And now over in the middle lane, never mind, it's just the two supports here, they can't really make any move onto Sacred, but up in the top lane, they did get the lasso onto Moo, they'll hex him up, they get the finger down, and Moo, I mean, he's been trying for that same split push play all game long, he is now starting to get punished for it a little bit, as they find the kill, Sacred wants a little bit more though, tried to blink his way forward onto Z Freak, but Weaver's able to fall back in time, Infamous want to look for more though, but Gunner... He's able to sneak by under the cover of that invis rune, so they can't quite get onto him, but... I mean, you look at the status of the map right now, Infamous are just trying to push their way forward, dealing with the split from Mu whenever they can, and... Well, at this point, maybe just looking for further objectives, they don't have an immediate push opportunity, but they've got a 4k lead, and... It just feels like they have more of the map open to them than four zoomers have to work with. Yeah, and it's where this Aegis, even though it is getting delayed, you would have loved to take that Roche maybe five minutes ago just to give Lumiere that buffer. They haven't found that entrance onto the TA just yet. Of course, they had that sick play on their previously planted Observer Ward where they killed him when Infamous used four TPs to try and kill Weaver, but I don't think Infamous are going to make that same mistake, and it's also where we're still in a very tight game. If they make a mistake, and oh, no. that's it. the mistake. Nice Press the attack, though. Yeah, Husky. He has one job at this point, and he is uh, able to get it done there. Husky, just Husky saves the day, Gunner falls back, and, well, that's the Fiend's Grip down. Samum still doesn't have the lasso up for about 25, so there's a bit of an opening. Unfortunately, they are going to lose Z-Freak there in the south side jungle. Double damage TA just kind of blows him up. Yeah, can't really do much about that, but... Will this be enough for Lumiere to start in the pit is the real question. I guess to him it is, and now the question is, will four zoomers make an entrance here with items like the Blink Dagger and the Kai Assange on the Storm in the Tree? Because without their participation, I think this is just going to be a freebie. And there's your first approach to the game, an incredibly important timing for Infamous. One that they will be able to give away, because Tabili is still looking towards that Scotty, and that Scotty is all important for that Terrorblade, but... Will it be enough is the real question. Because we are getting into this game where Infamous are going to start taking your buildings, and if Costa Bile eats one or two deaths, the game gets so much more infinitely difficult for you. And you are going to see them start to take away that space from four zoomers. It's going to be much more difficult to find items anywhere on the map on that side. <laughs> Just trying to sort of uh, starve out the TB as best as they can as Gunner. He's going to go for the long zip, TPing his way out. He will make his escape. Moo TP'd out at the same time, so 
They do get everybody out of that top lane, and this has to be the game plan for four zoomers. You just kind of want to delay as much as you possibly can until Kostable is built up into a stronger position. Yeah, and, well, top tower will fall, of course. You hate taking the tier ones. You will just give that glyph back to your opponents. They get to play around that buffer just a little bit more. But more importantly, Kostable has set up shop. This is exactly what you want to do with this Terra Blade. It's either the Tigre or the Naga, but okay, jump. You jump onto Michael. They'll blow him up before really anything can arrive in time. Gunner oh, no. wants the haste, and... He did get it, but now the Fiend Script comes in. They get the Nightmare on the Husky as well, so there's no press the attacker to save him. Okay, it does come out now. Gunner trying to zip himself out, using the Haste Rune to make his break for it, and it looks like Infamous, yeah, they'll just settle for the kill on the Husky, take the guaranteed money, and back themselves away, but... Okay, Z Freak's able to TP out, but what a play there. It's set up nicely by Infamous, it's just they don't quite have that secondary lockdown for the Legion Commander. Husky once again pulls his teammate's ass out of the fire, and... Well, Gunner lives to see another day here as he builds his way towards that BKB. Yeah, and I wonder who woke him up. If if A woke him up, or w what happened there? Because he could only stun one, of course, so it was going to be a close kill regardless, but I feel like something execution-wise might have been uh, in the works there for Infamous. Of course, you didn't have Finger either. That would have been the easiest way to find those kills, but at the same time it's those moments where you're able to just barely escape that are absolutely massive you're not finding deaths on these heroes and not to mention all of your waves got cut before then so it's not like you're immediately able to get onto your opponent's side of the map and costa Bile is 300 gold away from his scotty this is a very real game where during that meta lumiere could very easily die twice he's got to be very careful with how he uses his life the bkb it matters a lot for everyone else but okay jump Quick jump onto Michael, they're just going to blow him up. Now, though, they need to make a decision. Do we go any further? Does Infamous have about four heroes hanging out around the Tier 1 tower? It would certainly be a fight if they wanted to try and push in for that objective, so... Well, they're waiting. Poking around, seeing what they can find, and what they can find is Lumiere. They're going to blow him up, or not blow him up, but lock him down initially, but now Sacred jumps in. That's a very good hoof stomp, but now they've got to back off. The Stampede going to come through. The tower was taken down as Gustavo focused in on the objective, and... I think that might be the end of it. Some, um, eh, worth a shot there. Throw the flame break in, see who gets knocked back, but not really sure if they can do much here. Is Gustavo, ooh, I don't know about that one. Meta still has about half its duration, so realistically speaking, there is an opening, but still have to be so incredibly careful. Even with the numbers advantage, you are still going into a TA with two lives, so four zoomers will take the tower and the kill, and they'll back away before that evolves into anything larger. Yeah, at the same time though, this is what Infamous have been waiting for. They use meta, they know that the Terra Blade can't do anything for the foreseeable future. Now it's going to be up to four zoomers to just cut waves. If they can keep their waves pushed out in this moment, then suddenly Infamous get nothing with their first Aegis, and they're not able to find those very important tower pushes that they need in this game. Because we are getting to this opportunity where Kosabile, he's got a DD rune, he's got a Scotty. Unfortunately, can't do really all too much with the DD rune. It does expire just that much quicker but having the scotty is just so important looking at what he goes next could see the daedalus could see items like the scotty just anything to allow him to survive in these fights in this game is still very very scary and infamous they need to find their opportunity to close it out of course first aegis was never going to be the game but around that second roche timing we're going to need to see a little bit more from them although we're talking about the second roche timing there is still a little bit of a window for them to try and make use of the first you see them pushing their way forward See what they can Gunner. catch. There's the blink. They managed to get the hex into the fiend's grip. Where's Husky? He's not actually here. There's no save. And Gunner just gets blown up. Husky way too far back to be able to save his buddy. And, well, what else can they find? They're trying to track Moose. Samum is getting closer. Lasso is available. They would rather not have to use it, and they're not going to need it. Lumiere blinks in, gets the damage down. Double kill for the TA. Now for Zoomer is very much on the back foot here. The Aegis will be expiring on the Templar Assassin, but... They got exactly what they wanted with that final fight. Yep, finding the storm, getting the kills. Costa Bile is still doing a real good job of finding these creep waves, though. He's just always getting that split push done around the map, keeping these waves in. But at the same time, unfortunately for four zoomers, you can't make other plays. It's where if the storm and the tree are both dead, there's literally no space on the map for them to actually get aggressive on their opponents. It's where literally only the Manta or the Conjure image illusions can show in these waves. 
And very interestingly, we see the TA go for the Ag Shard, which just means that that split push is even more difficult and something that you have to be very careful with, especially if you're Husky, because you don't have a natural dispel. You don't have a Lotus or built up on your team either. So if you're the one that ends up eating that silence, suddenly your save doesn't ex exist. But they are smoking up, having that meta back. They'd love to get the pop here. They're gonna jump in. They've got Lumiere inside of the Vortex. They need the lockdown. Husky comes in for the duel. It is gonna be a sacrificial play, but if it can find them the kill, They'll take the trade off. The Lumiere is still not dead. He does get rooted by the Overgrowth, though. Costable is just pushing in for the damage. Lumiere dropped low. Lumiere taken down. But Gunner, a little bit low himself. Why want to be careful here? But Infamous aren't able to get up in his face at the moment. Gunner actually just wants to push in. Going to be able to catch out the Batrider inside of the Vortex. The Finger of Death, though, for Michael will secure that kill. But Costable is still pushing. He does get stunned up, though. The Silence was down onto him as well. Now the Lasso in play. Not sure if they're going to be able to kill him off, though, before he can get the Sunder. Oh, oh. they're Sacred. Very nicely timed. They get the Stomp in. They absolutely needed that, otherwise Asunder could have been a bit of a bailout. Kostable and Mu are dead. Now Zeefree gets caught out by A. He's got that Aether Lens, so the extended cast range allows him to hit up the Fiend's Grip from well far enough away that Zeefree has no recourse. Oh man, that's so good, actually, for them. In Fort Zoomers, they thought that they could take the fight because they still have that vision placed up on the hill. They should have known where their opponents were playing, but just centimeters away from that ward, Infamous kind of dragged them into that awkward tree line where they don't have the best vision, and they just ran out of everything. They spent so much to get that Lumiere kill, and of course, they'll take that every single day of the week, but... We're still not out of the woods yet. This game is still far from over, and you see Costabili immediately change it up in his build. He's getting that BKB just so that way he doesn't have to worry about that line, because Michael just carried that fight. He had so many good hexes that actually just kind of ended up carrying them through. They were actually able to get through those timings where they didn't have a stun for four or five seconds, and then they get that reset, and then Sacred comes in as well. I mean, it's just a really well-choreographed fight, one that they didn't even have a TA. It was a 4v4. Now sort of looking around because Husky oh okay they were able to keep it he had a gem there he mm -hmm. dropped it obviously yeah. when he dies but they were able to recover it so I was looking at the infamous side sort of assuming they had picked it up but for zoomers keep that in that is going to be big as you were talking about with the upgrade to the side traps for that TA those silences can really sort of hurt you but if Husky has that detection maybe he can sort of avoid uh, walking into that silence and still maintain that defensive capability. Or zoomers. It's a very sort of forward position for them. The problem is, they're the ones on the low ground. Infamous have the sort of advantage here with the ramp, but she going to look to push out a little bit. Sacred and A have made their way into the river. Smoke, uh, about half its duration here, so I'm not really sure they're going to run into anyone with this. No, yeah, not a whole so. lot to be done. At the same time, though, you are looking at items like the Agnum Scepter and a Lumiere. Now, he is going to be everywhere. And if you ever try to split the map, especially if you don't have Husky behind you, you're going to die. That is the reason he went for this buildup, I think, is to really try and punish both the Storm and the Weaver for going for these sideline pushes, something that Z Freak absolutely adores whenever he's on four heroes like the Weaver and Rubik. So the punish is already set up. It's just a matter of whether or not Lumiere is actually able to find those opportunities. Not to mention... If they ever lose sight of Lumiere, he just side traps out. He gets the projection, and then suddenly these fights look really difficult when timings like meta, BKBs, things like that kind of get spent, and then you don't get the immediate return. It's going to be a game of whether or not Lumiere can get in and out of these fights, and one that he's already set himself up for pretty well. Elven Tunic on TB is going to be a little bit frustrating, though. Lumiere queues up the MKB just in case there's any chance for that butterfly. What an obnoxious tier 3. Yeah, it's just... uh Quite the return on investment for, well, not even really an investment. You get the item for free. So, incredibly strong for those right-click carries. And Costable obviously going to try and take advantage of it. And, well, we were wondering to a certain extent whether he would go for something more on the sort of damage line or the BKB. It looks like he's kind of splitting the thought process there a little bit. He went for the crit stick and then will transition into the BKB first. So, a little bit of both. That BKB, though, obviously not completed just yet. However, for Zoomers, they've gone for the five-man smoke, so they're looking for something. And Michael's coming mid. Yep, this should be a relatively easy kill for them, or maybe not. The Aeon Disc is going to get popped, so Michael can't be taken down just yet. Turns uh -oh. around for the Earth Spike, and now the Stampede's going to get him away. And, oh, Lumiere actually went in for a little bit of damage. Now they've got the Lasso. They're going to take Husky away, so... 
Well, that LC out of the fight. The Fiend's Grip now can be deployed freely onto Gunner. No, it can't. Overgrowth comes in from Moo, shutting that one down. Sunder now out from the TB as well, keeping him up in the fight, dropping Sacred Low. They do manage to take down the Centaur, but Kosafli is still in a lot of trouble. His HP is so low, and the finger from Michael takes him down. But Gunner and Z-Freak, they're still trying to push. No. Looking to get on the... Oh my god, on the back line, but the Earth Spike stun is both up. They're going to get the Silence down as well from Lumiere, and they're going to be able to win the fight. That's just... Every single time. They need lockdown. Michael has it. He's hitting two, three-man stuns. And he does end up sort of paying for it because Husky comes in with the overwhelming odds at the end. But at that point, who cares? You got exactly what you wanted. You set up Lumiere to clean that fight up. And you look at four Zoomers, they do come away with more gold. But it's very expensive. They need a buyback on Husky. They still lose two of their main cores. And it just feels like Infamous, despite the losses, they just keep on making these plays. Yeah, it, it's just so, so sick from him. And it sets up Lumiere. Of course, that was also insane from Mu to dodge out the hoof stomp coming in from Sacred. Not only bait him to wasting it, but then having the interrupt on the overgrowth where suddenly you don't have grip in that fight. That was really high level stuff there. Unfortunately, that, this is the timing. You didn't take out the TA. Lumiere's immediately back into the pit. You don't have meta for 60 seconds. I feel like Costa Billy is going to need to show up eventually towards this Roche because otherwise you're getting to the point where can you actually afford to give Lumiere this next Aegis? If somehow four Zoomers are the ones to claim it, they're in such a good position till that 40 minute mark. Until then though, this is the huge threat where Lumiere finally has enough items where he could just Blitzkrieg you. He just suddenly takes all of your buildings if he wins one or two team fights. And at the same time, Infamous, they know how powerful this timing is and why they're getting so aggressive right now. Dobbs, though, is flying. Stampede, Michael blinks in. They get the lasso down. That'll pull Husky out once again. Last time around, he had the buyback. This time, no such play. So Gunner going to get Run. hit by the Fiend's Grip. The Overgrowth comes out too late. They're dead. Gunner is going to go down. Moose left alone in the middle of five. And that smoke play, it is absolutely perfect. Costable is at least able to just make a run for it. But now, I mean, they could just double back. They could finish off Roche, get the Aegis, get the Shard, and push for whatever they want. But it looks like they're actually going to do that in sort of reverse order. They'll make the push first, and then maybe try to go after Roshan afterwards. Although, you do need to be a little bit careful of those death timers if that is the play. But if they can get a full lane of racks out of this, I think they'll take that trade off. The Glyph is going to slow them down, but it's still just the whole team on this high ground. Oh, this would be so tightly timed out. I think do they I think they leave on the melees and then they immediately run to the pit and then they have enough time to do anything before they could get set up on four zoomers. We'll see what they do here. They are okay. They just take the whole full set. Why the hell not? But at the same time, there could be a response. Costabile not only was able to finish up his BKB, but has the meta again. So I wonder if this is greedy, because they are going to immediately start it, and with that tier 2 still alive, for Zoomers, they have an opening to make their time towards that pit. It's going to be a little bit messy, and they got kind of have to stagger themselves, but... Ew, is this too well timed out from Infamous? Gunner, he's going to zip onto A instead, so... They'll get the Bane kill, but now, can they get in the Roche? He's going to go for it, Gunner zips in, can he grab it? No, he can't. Lumiere's able to take the Aegis, he grabs... Yeah, he grabs the Shard as well, so... Oh boy, some nerve-wracking stuff there, but Infamous, they hold on, and A, uh, sorry about it, bud, but you do have to be sacrificed to finish off Roshan, and now if you're four Zoomers, what is the next step? The good news about that play is that Costable got the kill and held the BKB, so you do still have that, and if the TB can survive, if you get that meta for its full duration, just have him sort of hacking away with the damage then you can still win it. The TA's two lives may not be enough, but as we saw in the previous fight, Costable was not able to keep himself alive long term. Of course, he didn't have the BKB then, so maybe that is the game changer, but if you're four Zoomers, you need to be very sort of certain that that will be enough. He has the BKB, now he's got the Daedalus as well, and uh, Mu, does he? Yeah, he does. He finished off an Aghanim Scepter, so he is getting an insane amount of sort of vision and control down here, sort of an answer to the TA traps in a lot of situations. Yeah, and we'll see how they actually end up dealing with it. Kostabili also has his kill item. He has a Daedalus. If he is ever able to beat into, especially the Batrider, he, he, he's been playing so well up until this point, but lacking items like the Octarine Core, like the Shiva's Guard, he dies so fast. And if he's not actually able to approach Kostabili, the chaos in the fight isn't making room for him, then I could definitely imagine this Batrider just immediately getting bursted out. And then suddenly, 
this game looks still pretty scary. This is their moment, though. If Infamous win here, and actually, Lumiere is hunting Moo top, the Ags gives him uh, quite a lot of vision, though, to play around with. At the same time, though, this is why he went for that Ags on the TA, to actually catch them in these kind of areas of the map where, unfortunately, if you get a little bit too caught up in your own game plan, you just get a free BKB popped out of you, you get murdered on the Treant, you have to be so cautious here. Even though Husky, he's got Blink. He's got Blink Duel. If he wanted, he could definitely throw himself away. And, oh, that's scary. Mm. Well, the TA hit level 25, so the Meld Bash is there. But uh, I do want to point out as well, for Z-Freak, he was able to get his hands on a Lotus Orb. So, huge. you can reflect some spells, but more importantly... Oh, oh Jesus. You have the Dispel is what I was going to say, but that doesn't matter. You can't Dispel damage. Lumiere just blows up Gunner and... He makes that play with three or four heroes around him on the four zoomer side. Everyone just kind of assumed Lumiere wasn't actually going to take that risk, and he does so anyway. Now he's in on Tamu, oh, jumping his way forward. Huh. I, okay. He's just picking them off one by one. It's like a bad horror movie. They're just losing everything. And Husky, oh, he's, he's, he's not going to get off. away. Okay, well, they got to cut the waves. Z Freak's already set up, but. I'm just terrified. Yeah, Z Freak's using the swarm and the gem just to try and clear out those traps. They just have a lapse for a few seconds there. The traps get in between, and then the psionic projection comes through. Even if he doesn't get those kills as cleanly as he did, I mean, that's just insane from Lumiere. Of course, he had the Aegis. He wanted that fight if they wanted to give it to him, because that just means they get to play around this timing where four zoomers still don't have glyph, but. I mean, that's insane. That's absolutely absurd what Lumiere just did to his opponents. And now he has a Swift Blink. I mean, this tower is going to die incredibly quickly. And without Mu, you don't really have spells to throw around here. Gunner's going to need to do something towards this preplay. But there's also that fear that you just get caught by a random trap in the lane. So he might not even be able to make that type of play. This is Rax. Yeah, they're just going to take a second one. Gunner? Okay. I mean, that's a nice sort of initial move. But with the entirety of Infamous behind Lumiere... You can't stick around long enough to actually make a difference, and yeah, the racks are just going to fall. Living Armor is going to slow it down, but not by much, so Infamous just seizing control of this 23k net worth lead, and well, to be honest, I think they could just swing bot here as well with the Aegis up for another minute. You do have to maybe be a little bit careful considering four zoomers have everybody up and all their ults ready, but I don't know. Infamous may just play it safe, maybe back off, establish control of the map, and wait for... Uh, another Roche attempt to come their way, which... I mean, it sounds like a nice play, but... Kosable's on the other side. You'd be giving him more time to farm. That is always going to be a risk, so they'll have to balance out... the risk of letting the TB farm, as opposed to the risk of trying to push the high ground right now. They're trying to catch their opponents in a mistake. If they walk too far out of the base, they want to get a buyback, I believe. They want to try and find those pickoffs, and... They know that the full five-man engagement is just going to favor four zoomers too heavily, especially with heroes like the Storm Spirit, where I could definitely imagine Gunner taking three ultimates, buying back, and then they win one fight. And, of course, lineups like four zoomers, all it takes is one fight. And then suddenly, Infamous, their window closes. I think that's where we're going to see them play a much slower, more moderate style of Dota here. And four zoomers are venturing out. They want the cliff here, but this is scary. They're going to try to go on to A first. The BKB, though, will be activated, so the Bane's able to fall back. Samum, meanwhile, pushing forward. He doesn't want the lasso just yet. Trying to hold as long as he can, but Kostable, he did get hit up by the Fiend's Grip. They need to be able to cancel it. Gunner's trying to get in there, but again, that BKB keeping the Bane from being taken down immediately. Eventually, though, Kostable's back into the fight, but by the time he does so, Gunner died, but he'll buy back. Zipping back into the fight. A taken down right away. They're going to get in onto Samum as well. The duel, unsuccessful in terms of the win, but they do find the pickoff. And now Infamous, they need to be very careful. Michael's going to get hit up, slowed down, pulled in by the Vortex, but Sacred oh no. able to blink in, overwhelming blink directly onto Gunner. Michael now comes in with the stun, keeping Costabile at arm's length. And Infamous may be able to get out of here. Gunner's died twice, so they don't have that sort of gap closer. And look at Lumiere. He's waiting, seeing if there's an opening. Costabile, though, still has the Sunder. Gotta be very careful and Sacred. He is dropping pretty low, but Hex comes in from Michael. That's going to take away some of that damage for a little while, and... No meta, though. Yeah, he ran out of time. He also used the zeal. Even that wasn't enough. So, at this point, for four zoomers, it's time to fall back. But, to be honest, that I, that goes pretty well. I mean, yeah, Gunner does die back. But, that was still a fight that you at least hold your own in. And you take it outside of your base. That's going to buy them maybe a little bit more time. But, you need to have meta. Without that, there really just is no longer a fight to be had. So, they have a very hard limit 
on when they can push back in. Yeah, and you already see they're getting ready in case Lumiere makes the mistake of coming up to this high ground before he has support. But the only one behind him right now is Michael. He has to be very careful here. Costa Vila could very easily just walk up. He even buys a Basher just to have that timing where if they do get that Blink Duel, can they actually find this TA? They've got Glyph as well, so they do need to be very, very careful here. 24 seconds until the storm. This is still the danger zone, but Infamous will give it to them. They'll back them up in. That was honestly a horrible fight for Infamous with the way that their execution ended up landing. They used the Stampede to end up trying to get the Batrider out, but the Batrider got clipped by Duel. And then suddenly, really oh, lose all your time. Oh, but Costa Vila. There's the okay. save from Husky, though, but the Fiend's Grip is in. They have to cancel it. There's going to be the overgrowth, but Costa he actually, he's thinking about maybe going in. He's going to pop the Sunder. Just Storm. back away. Here comes Gunner, though, in. He doesn't have an Ags, but he still is able to get the Vortex down onto one, but it's the tankiest hero in the game right now, so I don't know if they're going to be able no. to do this. Gunner, Gunner, you cannot die. He's able to get back Husky once again. Oh, man, he is clutch on the press, the attack there, and... On times like this, you kind of wish that LC could be a core just so you could get up to the AoE press the attack, but as a 5, that is very much a pipe dream. But that time around, even the single target version was enough to pull Gunner back. And they're smoking on meta. They're looking for it right now. They want to find their target. Of course, Roche could be respawning in a second here, but anything would help in Osmum. Oh, Oof. so well played. And it will be a moderately long timer, which does favor four zoomers just a little bit more because, of course, Infamous are going to play safe until that timing is around. But at the same time, anytime four zoomers leave their base, it's a risk. It's them really kind of testing the waters here. And I believe Infamous are out of smokes for the time being. We're not going to see them make those sweeping plays nearly as easily as they were before. But at the same time, I think four zoomers are going to be scared to get anything done here, especially because they want to get these trees down. They want to get that vision from Moo so you can make sort of these plays in areas where you know you have the advantage. But somehow Infamous have just gotten away with playing in this bottom lane for so long, large in part because they got the other two racks already. It's very simple for them to ignore the tree. Mm -hmm. They don't really need to be afraid because the other sections of the map just aren't places they want to be anyway. But... While this is going down, Costable is slowly but surely building up strength. That Basher gets upgraded into an Abyssal, so he does now have some guaranteed lockdown to work with. And you see him queuing up the Satanic next, so <laughs> the TP is going to be a problem as this game goes on. Infamous have done a decent job of sort of trying to keep him contained to this point, but feels like you're going to have to basically focus exclusively on him with the lockdown moving forward because between the Abyssal and a, uh, excuse me, and a Satanic play. You're not going to necessarily be able to take him down 100 to 0 without having multiple forms of CC. As both sides getting close, Gunner zipping in, looking for A. Can he get the kill quickly? Not quite, but the BKB is going to be there, so they can't lock him down. And Costable is actually coming in. The Bash comes in onto A. They're not going to be able to finish him off, though. And at this point, I don't know if Four Zoomers want to go any further forward. They are trying to back themselves off. Maybe some um is in range. Nope. Able to blink himself out. Very well timed. Gunner will miss with the zip. Michael now comes in with the finger of death. It does get reflected by the Lotus, so Michael does sort of blast himself a little bit there, but they're still just sort of doing this dance. Look at Lumiere, though. He's going to try to push in. Gets the bash down. Sacred, though. Yep, that's not going to work. BKB activated. They'll turn now onto the Centaur. They hit him up with the duel, but the Fiend's Grip, it's onto the TD. Move. Where is he? He's not able to get the overgrowth off. Now he'll deploy it, but Gustavale, there's nothing to do. He used the Sunder previously. He'll be taken down. There's no money for buyback. And now four Zoomers are just going to fall apart. Oh. Moo and Gunner taken down. Husky dead. GG called. And Infamous. Oh. Well... They do have to work a little bit harder for that one. That extra effort has to come in as we hit that 45 minute mark, but they get it. They take the win and they tie up the series. And really, we, we already praised him enough and I feel like he's gonna have that praise for a while here, but Michael, man, holy cow. He just did everything. He was so well-timed. There's so many moments in that game as well where the Lotus Orb goes off. He knows he needs to tank a spell or two in a lot of the situations just so that Earth Spike gets chained up and for Zoomers, on the other side, Husky was so clutch. 2-11 and 6, you wouldn't imagine this LC had that much impact, but there are so many plays there that if Infamous just get that hit, then suddenly the game is just instantly over. Four Zoomers lose 10 to 15 minutes or sooner. Husky did everything in his power to keep this game going for them, and towards that last fight, I think, unfortunately, it's just too hard to kill Sacred. They can't make him the target. They need to refocus a little bit more onto either the Batrider and the TA in the game where... Unfortunately, 
Infamous are able to get out on their course. They've got the Psionic Projection, they've got the Blinks, they've got the Forceps, they get that reset, and then four Zoomers almost get baited into that Centaur kill that they have to work so hard for. Costabile ends up using his BKB, his Meta, his Sunder, the target becomes him, and then unfortunately, they don't have that same degree of saves. Husky did such a fantastic job throughout the entire game, but when it's just nightmare after nightmare after Earth Spike after Hex, just everything became way too much for him to deal by himself. Not to mention, heroes like Tree and Protector, as soon as you use that Overgrowth, that's your team fight spell. That's your contribution. It just was way too long of a fight for four Zoomers to actually take, and unfortunately for them, Infamous get what was a very hard-fought victory, but really clean from both Summum and Lumiere. The cores were just bulletproof in that game. Yeah, so incredibly solid from the cores in general. As you can see on the scoreboard there, two deaths each for Lumiere and Samum. Sacred only dies three times, support duo just with four deaths each. So they play incredibly well, but even more sort of impressively, the efficiency with which they played uh, really stands out here as Infamous are able to tie up the series. So they drop the first match in a situation where well, they kind of let one get away from them, but they come back in game two. They managed to tie this up, and now we're going to have our third straight playoff series here going uh, to a third game. So the question now is, can four Zoomers recover their previous form that won them game one, or does Infamous take this newfound momentum uh, and push their way into that upper bracket final? As of right now, the answer is we, we have no idea. We actually have to wait for that third game to get underway. So we will be stepping aside for a moment as we take a bit of a break here. But when we come back, that third and final match between Infamous and four Zoomers.